Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare journal entries to record the formation of a partnership. Okay, so before we jump into the questions, let's just warm the brain up a little bit, right? So, what is a partnership? A partnership is a business entity that has between 2 and 20 owners. Well, it depends on the country in which you find yourself because some countries have legislation that allow for more than 20 owners. Now, why would someone want to form a partnership? Well, why do we want to start a business? To make a profit. What makes a partnership preferable to a sole trader? If you are the only person who is the, who's the sole owner, all the profits go to you and you are totally in control of the business and all the decisions. So why take on people? Well, one, usually if you take other people on as, as co-owners, there's more capital at start, right? Usually more people have more money than one person. Second of all, um, no one person knows everything. So not only is there more money available, but there are more, there's more knowledge, more skills available. And further, if you try to do all the work for a company by yourself, you'll be very overwhelmed. Now, some people like that kind of challenge, but other people, they want to be able to share the responsibility. So you can, you can facilitate the division of labor if you have partners working with you, right? So more capital, more knowledge, sharing labor, those are just some of the advantages. What about disadvantages? Well, one, you had to share a profit, right? So not all the profit will go to just one person. Second of all, you, you have to share control at some point in time, and that could lead to disagreements in the way things are done and conflict, which could be very destructive for the organization. And further, even if you take people on and you give them responsibility, there is no guarantee they will perform well or at all. They may do things to bring down the reputation of the company or harm the business itself. So while there are advantages to having more people on as co-owners, there are also disadvantages. All right? In another video I did, um, when I talked about appropriation accounts for partnerships, which I'll put, uh, I'll put a card to up there, I go into a bit more detail about the partnership agreement or the deed of partnership, which is that document that governs basically how the partnership is run. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail on it here because I want to keep this video short. So you can check out that, that um, you just rewind a couple of seconds, click on that card, or you can check out a link in the description below. Right, but what I want to do now is I want to get to the examples and there are just a couple examples because this part of the topic is very short. So let's begin. Okay guys, so let's take a look at some examples. First thing to do, of course, is to read. So we have Hem and Haw decided to start a partnership on January 1st, 2020. They brought the following assets into the partnership on that day. So we're seeing Hem brought in a vehicle, uh, Haw brought in equipment, Hem brought in cash at bank, and Haw brought in 10,000 of cash in hand. And we are required to prepare the journal entries to record the formation of the partnership. All right, so how do we use the general journal to record journal entries? Well, remember we have certain books of original entry. The other journals, the sales journal, the purchases journal, the returns in words journal, and the returns of words journal. And we also have the cash book. Now those books each record a specific type of transaction. The sales journal records credit sales only. The purchases journal records credit purchases only. Returns in words, returns out words, self-explanatory and the cash book records all cash and bank transactions. The general journal captures all other transactions that don't fall into any of those books. Specifically opening entries like these that we're about to do here, adjusting and closing entries. They also record the writing off of bad debts, the correction of errors and the purchase and sale of fixed assets on credit. And of course anything else you might think about that might, might not have been mentioned and also, once again, will not go in any of the other books of original entry. So that's, why, that's what we use the general journal for. Now, how do we use it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Basically, what you're going to do for any transaction, you enter the debit entries first, and then you enter the credit entries. And the credit entries must be indented relative to the debit entries. So let me show you. It's easier if I show you. So let's start with, um, with HEM. So HEM brought in a vehicle valued at 50000 so that goes, I, you notice that I have um, two columns here, right? The one on the left-hand side is the debit column, and the one on the right-hand side is the credit column. So it does kind of mirror a T account in terms of what goes on what side. Um, <clears throat> right, so vehicles are assets, and when you bring them in, you have to debit the asset account. So we're going to put that vehicle, 50,000, 
E50,000 was not you can see goes under the debit column. Um, him also brought in cash at bank, 30,000. So we're seeing that there. Now, whatever the owner contributes to the business is capital. So him brought in assets, vehicle and cash at bank. So that, those things represent his or her capital contribution. So his capital, now capital once again is credited when it increases. So let's take a look here. So you're noticing that capital is, well, there's a big space here. So it's indented relative to the debit entries and the figure, the corresponding figure goes under the credit column. And usually we are required to put a narrative or a narration, which is a very short description of the transaction. So here I'll just put to record the introduction of assets as capital by him. That is not the only thing you can put. You can put different things, but just try not to go overboard. You don't want to write an essay or a paragraph for a narrative. That's not necessary, right? Now, what about, <clears throat> what about Haw? So with Haw, um, no vehicle, equipment, 40,000. And then we have cash in hand, 10,000. So both are assets. So both went, were entered first and under the debit column. And of course, there were no liabilities brought in. So we're just going to have to total these things and put the capital figure. 40 and 10 is 50. So capital will be credited for 50,000. Well, Haw's capital account, that is. And the narration would be to record the introduction of assets as capital by Haw. So that's basically all there is to it, to be honest, right? But I do have one more example for you guys that shows um, assets and liabilities being brought in. So let's switch to that now. Okay guys, so I'm doing a kind of left and right split here. So on the left hand side is the information, the right hand side is the journal entries. So let's take a read. So pick and choose, two sole traders decide to combine their assets and liabilities and form a partnership on January 1st, 2020. So we have a column for picks items, a column for chooses items, and we're seeing at the bottom here that we have accounts payable and a loan. Now, um, choose is the one that has the loan, but they both have accounts payable. So this is gonna be a little different than the previous, exa previous example, but it's not gonna be hard. Once again, follow your protocol. Debit entries are entered first, followed by your credit entries, and the credit entries are indented relative to the debit entries. So I'm gonna come across on the right-hand side here. Let's go with pick first. So pick brought in land and buildings, a million. Fixtures and fittings, 200,000. Inventory, 40,000. Account receivable, 20,000. Cash at bank, 80,000. Cash in hand, 10,000. Now, the accounts payable is a liability, so it needs to be entered under the, on the credit side, in the credit column, that is. And the creditors or accounts payable has to be indented relative to the debit entry. So it goes there. And now capital. So to find capital, Remember, capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. So we're going to have to add up all of the asset values and we're going to have to minus the one liability. So 1.26 million is PIX capital. And of course, your narrative to record the introduction of assets and liabilities as by PIX as capital. Let's check out Choose. So Choose brought in equipment, 500,000. Motor vehicles, 300,000. Inventory, 60. Account receivable, 30. Cash at bank, 70. Cash in hand, 5. Now, accounts payable, we have 50. And we also have a loan, a five-year loan of 120,000. The capital figure now, once again, capital is equal to assets minus liabilities. So we have assets minus, so we have two liabilities now, so we'll add those together as well. And we have 795 to record the introduction of assets and liabilities by choose as capital. So that is basically it. I have just one more thing, of one variation on this same example to show you guys, but I will say that I actually prefer this format to the one I'm about to show you, and I'll explain why. There's actually something I like about that other format as well, but let, let, me, let me go with it and show you guys, right? So what we're gonna do is the same information, but we're going to enter all of the assets first, for both partners, all assets, then all liabilities, and then the capitals. So let's go, so pick. So land and buildings, equipment, fixtures and fittings, motor vehicle, inventory. Now accounts, inventory is 100 because you have 40 for pick and 60 for choose. Account receivable, 20 and 30 is 50. Cash at bank, 80 and 70 is 150. Cash in hand, 10 and 5 is 15. Accounts payable, 90 and 50 is 140. And the loan, is well, you only had one, 120. Now, just so you know, there is no specific order in which you have to list the assets. Just make sure you put your assets first, 
I just sort of put them in the order in which they would usually appear in the balance sheet. Now your capitals, so I'm just going to pull the figures from before, but if we had to kind of add it up, you, you'll have to go in your calculator or do a separate working because it would not be as apparent here as in the previous example, which assets were for which partner and the same for liabilities. But this format saves uh, a bit on space and time, especially when you have partners of certain assets and or liabilities that both or all the partners have. Uh, Oh, sorry, my narration to record the introduction of assets and liabilities introduced at the formation of the partnership. You could have put also by pick and choose, but once again, the narrations, it depends on your style. Just try to make sure you have captured the essence of the transaction. If there are any important figures, like for example, you could have put, I, could, I should have put the capitals, the, 12, the 1.26 million for, for pick and the 795 for choose. Right, so, so that's really it for this video, guys. To be honest, um, there is not much that we, that we do at this level with the journal entries for partnerships. If anybody, however, has seen things in their school, in their class that their teacher has shown them that I haven't shown you guys here, please share it in the comments below. I do not profess to know everything. I know that there are people who are smarter than me, who know more than me, um, but I'm just sharing what I know and how I know to share it. And of course, please feel free to help us improve our knowledge um, by sharing what you know in the comments below. If you want to make a video and, and link it in the, in the comments below, please feel free. All right. Um, so I, th I think it's outro time. I, I, was there anything else I wanted to show you guys? I, th I think that was it. Yeah. Okay. So outro time. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's it for this video. I promise it will be short. Okay. So remember, you need to practice, right? And a, a lot of times people message me asking me for past papers to email them. Guys, I'm real sorry. I cannot email you past papers, question papers. I can't do that. You can go to cxc-store.com. And you can pay for a subscription there and you can have all of the past papers your heart desire. All right. Uh, the solutions, on the other hand, I have put up solutions on my Facebook page. You can check the description below for a link to there. I know some of you guys say Facebook is for old people, but it's still a tool, right? Um, not everything can be on Instagram and TikTok, right? But maybe we could change that, right? It's only impossible until somebody does it. So maybe that's something for me to work on. Or maybe better yet, I can work on a website, right? Um, I think there's a poll, a poll tool I could use. So um, let me do a poll. Anybody who thinks I should have a website, give it a vote. And if there's no poll tool, um, I guess that was kind of dumb of me. <laughs> Anyhow, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys who subscribe, who like, who share, right? And remember, <clears throat> guys, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do. If you are willing and able to put in the work and you actually do put in the work, and you have the correct mindset. You need to believe it can be done. You need to have a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. You need to believe that you can learn and get better, right? As Tom Bilyeu says, the human is the ultimate adaptation machine. And along the way, yeah, we don't know everything. What's the topic of this video? Partnerships. Sometimes you need people to help you and that's okay. It's okay to ask for help. Google is a fantastic tool. YouTube is a fantastic tool as well. And you just need to have some patience when you are looking and researching, right? Not everything is going to fall into your lap in the first search result, okay? So just be patient, right? But as you know, if what you're doing isn't working, then you're going to have to try a different approach to it. Adapt. Because change is the only constant. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.